Hi, this is Betsy with Married with Luggage, and on today's edition of Try Something New, we are talking to Jess Ainley with Globetrotter Girls. Mm-hmm. We're talking about vegetarianism today. Um, as you know, in the uh, in today's issue, I talked about my one month of weekday vegetarianism, yes. Yes. and you are a hardcore seven day a week vegetarian. Yeah, hardcore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Lifelong. Lifelong. Okay, Lifelong. that was my first question. Right. So you have never had meat. Um, I have had meat twice. I tried a chicken sandwich from McDonald's and turkey deli slices on a sandwich. Okay, I have to say, of, <laughs> of the meat choices that you could have mm-hmm. picked, <laughs> that yes. was not the best. Yes, I understand that. Okay. I really do. Yeah, yeah. But I was 18 and there may have been drinking. Ah, uh, so, got it. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, so here we are in Thailand mm-hmm. and you guys have been traveling uh, for a year and a half mm-hmm. or two years 21 now. 21 months. Wow. Mm-hmm. And what is it like to travel with uh, with this this vegetarianism? Okay, um, it has gotten easier in Asia. Thailand is wonderful for vegetarians. Right. We eat at a different vegetarian restaurant almost every day. Wow. Um, which is really really cool. Um, in other countries, in Central America, it was actually really difficult, and we were probably the most unhealthy that we've ever been. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and, and then in the U.S. Or, or Europe, it's really easy. You just have to kind of search it out. But I, I've been a vegetarian my whole life, and Danny has been a vegetarian for 18 years. Okay. So we're good at it. <laughs> but that, that was my second question. Yeah. So you've lived in several countries. Yeah. Uh, and so you've experienced what it's like to have a home and cook and, and, and be a vegetarian that way, which I'm assuming is easier than with travel, except maybe here. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, if you have a kitchen and you can get ideas and cook your own food, it's right. great. Um, the other thing is that you can control what goes in your food. I think a big thing for us is we order something vegetarian, but sometimes, and we're pretty sure, maybe a lot of the time in certain countries, there's definitely meat in the food. So it's really hard to control what you eat when you eat at a restaurant three meals a day, right. 365 days a year. <laughs> that, that is true. That is true. So, so, so when you were growing up, is, is your whole family vegetarian? Yeah, I'm an only child, oh, so okay. I mean, it's just the three of us. But yeah, my, my dad was a vegetarian, and he sort of converted my mom, and then they had me. So yeah, we, there was no meat in the house. We were making nut burgers before there were veggie burgers on the market. So we would, you would take cashews and eggs and cheese, and you would make these patties. and, and You could have been Miss Garden Burger. Yeah, I guess I could have. <laughs> yeah, had you been entrepreneurial, yes. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, so when your friends ask you, you know, what's it what's it like to be a well first of all, let me ask, how many of your friends are vegetarians? Um none. Not? No. I really don't think I have any friends that are vegetarian. No. So how does that no. impact your social life when people ask you out to dinner or take you to their home? Not at all. Not never. I mean, um good friends obviously who have known me for a long time could care less either way. You know, like people are just courteous about making food. Um, you get a lot of people who they feel awkward. I think meat eaters feel awkward sometimes, and they'll be like, "Oh my God, this doesn't bother you, does it?" You know, and, and no, it doesn't bother me at all. I mean, especially for someone like me who's never eaten meat, like I don't even associate anything negative with it. Mm-hmm. Um, in that way, like you go ahead and eat your meat, it doesn't bother me at all. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but some people feel kind of awkward towards me. Um, but just in general, no, it's not really a problem. Okay, it's not it's not really a problem at all. But the people that I know also are just more aware of I think vegetarianism. Right. Um, I come from a pretty sort of like liberal, open-minded background. That's true. But you also come from so. Chicago. That's true. I mean, <laughs> you mean hot dogs? And I mean the hot dogs and, and, and the pepperoni the, pizza. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely that's true. And also, um, it's different now. When I was a kid, there was not. I mean, we would go to like diners because that was the only place where I could get kid food, like just like a grilled cheese or spaghetti. Um, but we could not really eat out a lot when I was a kid. Okay. Now, we, you know, in Chicago, we ate at I think five vegan restaurants in three weeks. Oh we well, there. Chicago's so, a great food town. Yeah, so it's, yeah. A, it's a different world now than right. it was, you know, 20 years ago. So, what do your friends ask you when they're curious about your uh, your eating habits and, and if they wanted to try it themselves? What do they ask you and what do you recommend? If they want to, they do play with the idea. Mm-hmm. A, lot, a lot of people play with the idea. That's true. And I think what you get, I get, um, I don't get really open-minded questions. What I get are, how do you get your vitamins? And you know, like, don't you or aren't you curious about trying meat? So I really get the other way. People aren't really. 
they're not as curious as they are afraid of the consequences. Uh, I think. Okay. So, and I and I do have to say, in in those cases, like I think being a vegetarian, it you have to be more mindful of what you eat. Okay. So I just try and give advice that way. Um, so making sure that you eat the right amount of, you know, eating spinach is probably the best thing that you can do to get all the things that you think that you can't get or you can only get from red meat, for example, things like really? that. Really. Well, yeah, I mean, you have, you have iron, and you have, like, all your, all the different vitamins. I mean, of course, I should have a list, and I should know this, um, but you definitely get from, from green leafy vegetables almost everything that you're missing by not eating red meat, but you have to be really conscious of it and try it. You do, really do have to try it. Or you can supplement. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I know lots of people who do supplement, and I also know overweight vegetarians, so tell me, how does that happen? Um, well, it happens. I can tell you is from it, personal it, experience. Oh, sh- <laughs> I don't mean you, but, but I mean I have seen and oh, it. Always surprises um, me because you always think they're going to be, you know, absolutely not. Done. Absolutely not. I think that there is uh, a really sort of a misconception that vegetarianism equals health, mm. and I don't, I do not think that it equals health at all. In fact, I think a lot of vegetarians are uh, suffer from malnutrition mm. because if you being a vegetarian means you have to know more about what you're putting in your body. Mm-hmm. If you know nothing about nutrition, but you do eat a steak, well, you're getting minerals and, and vitamins that you, you know, you, you're not even thinking about. You're just like, I love steak, and that's right. it. So just like you see um, overweight, especially well, obese um, people who live under the poverty line, right? So that has to also do with malnutrition. Maybe they go eat fast food all the time, and that's mm-hmm. why they're overweight. But the same thing comes from vegetarianism. If you don't put the right things into your body, you know, you can get into the trap where you just eat spaghetti, sandwiches, uh, Subway is your health food, right? right. Uh, things like that. So if you don't know, then, then you can easily become overweight. So really, the thing with vegetarianism is it's just like any other way of eating. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it has to do a lot more with mindfulness. So when you do choose to be a vegetarian, especially a weekday vegetarian, you are just more aware of what you're putting in, right? Mm-hmm. So you're like, okay, I'm going to try not to eat meat today. What can I eat instead? That, mean, that means that you're thinking about what you're going to eat. And so that, that makes it a healthy alternative. That was true for, for me. I, I, every day I thought mm-hmm. a lot about yeah. what I was going to eat. As a matter of fact, yeah. every meal I thought, okay, now what can I have at my next meal? And right. I found that I was really planning everything out. Right. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. That's no, the thing. No. People want food to be fast and easy, but it shouldn't be. You know, you should be planning. And, and I think um, a great thing especially here in Thailand, it has been that I have been able to go to restaurants and because I can eat anything on the menu, I can also sort of control, okay, like I've eaten kale today and that's really great, you know, it's like superfood or I mm-hmm. had a smoothie that has been really healthy um, and I've been able to be a lot more mindful here. Um, I think it, it might be more difficult depending on where, where you're from. That may be true. Yeah, that may be true. I do. So, so what is your tip for someone who wants to go from uh, a meat eating lifestyle to vegetarianism? Should it be mm-hmm. cold turkey? Should it be uh, an, a gradual easing? Do you think the weekday vegetarian thing is is crazy? I think it's great. Okay. I think what you did is great. Okay. I absolutely think what you did is great. I think the transition is really important. I think you do have to be educated. I was really not educated. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, when you grow up being a vegetarian. Nobody tells you why. Nobody told me why I was a vegetarian. I we just were, and we didn't think about it. No one told um, me why I ate the way I did either. Right, exactly. <laughs> and you don't. You don't think about yeah. it. Exactly right. And so um, I think being a weekday vegetarian is an amazing way to start because if you do miss certain sort of vitamins, minerals, things like that, um, then you you might get them without even thinking about it when you do eat, eat the meat or the oh, fish, yeah. especially fish. Right. Um, but it does then allow you to start thinking about how you can do this in a healthy way. I think people who go cold turkey, you'll see that they get really tired, um, they're, and that they, they quit so much faster than if you mm-hmm. sort of ease into it. Or people who, um, they'll be a vegetarian for a year, and then they'll just all of a sudden crave meat like crazy and start you know eating steaks every day or something like that. Um, my, actually, my uncle was a vegetarian, and that's exactly what happened to him, was he, he was a vegetarian for a year, and then he went meat crazy. So wow. I think easing into it, understanding what you're doing, and then knowing that you can get the things that you think you're you're missing. You can get them from not eating meat, but knowing how to do that is, is the most important thing. So I think cold turkey is probably not the way to go. I think what you did is perfect. Okay. All right. Well, if you wanted to convert all the way into vegetarianism. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we can get you there. I don't know. <laughs> 
um one last question though about uh you mentioned the 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 fish and things like that i know there are people who call themselves vegetarians who eat fish which i i guess the actual term is pescatarian is that right yes um so so what is the difference between that and and why i mean obviously we know the difference is that they eat fish Mm -hmm. but why is it okay to eat fish and it's not okay you have no idea if i knew the answer to that question (laughs) um (laughs) Yeah, I, I have absolutely no idea what the mentality is. Um, okay. I, I don't know if it has something to do with cruelty. I mean, you know, I think that people associate a lot of animal cruelty with, you know, the bigger animals and right. the poultry and, and then red meat. Um, I, I don't understand, though, because when you're when you're picking bones out of the fish, I and mean, fish are such bony animals, you're so aware of that you're eating an animal. So right. I, don't, I don't really understand that. I do think that people uh, have a tendency to believe that fish are very, very good for you, which is true. That is true. As long as you know what kind of fish you're eating and mm-hmm. you don't have high mercury content and things like that. But, so I think that that might be it, like, oh, they have to eat fish. Okay. Um, the other thing it could be, which is not true anymore, but I think people might still have the mentality that it's too hard to eat in public. So it's too mm-hmm. hard to eat at a restaurant if you don't at least eat fish. So it's kind of your fallback. Yeah, I just think okay. it makes life so much easier. In fact, my mother now eats fish because okay. in the early 90s she was going to so many business meetings and she could never eat you know, she could only have pasta. Right. And that's the worst thing to eat at a meeting. Right. So that's actually why she started to eat fish because that is always available. And somehow this in between, between being a meat eater and a vegetarian. So. Okay. Well, I, I think I could definitely picture myself long term being a fish eater mm-hmm. and otherwise vegetarian. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's a, a pretty easy transition for most current meat eaters yeah, to absolutely. think of. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so. absolutely. But I think it's also really good because you don't need to eat meat every day. I think That's if, true. if you take anything away from from trying at least to be a vegetarian, a weekday vegetarian, it, it that's the way that humans actually used to eat is you ate the meat when you killed it, but you did not have it all the time. You really mm-hmm. only had meat once or maybe twice a week. So I think that that's actually a, you know sort of the right way to eat if you're going to try to at least be a weekday. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and I do notice, you know, now that I've finished the, the weekday vegetarian and I'm deciding whether I'm going to continue on with this, uh, well, but, but I do think that even the days that I do eat meat, I don't have to have meat three times a day. Oh, yeah. I don't have to have meat every day even, oh, yeah. and, it, and it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that there's a big misconception that the more meat you eat, is the, the healthier you will be because you're getting all these things that you think you're getting. Um, and I definitely think that if you have more meat in your diet, you're not getting the things that you get from, from nuts, from vegetables, mm-hmm. from fruits, you know, and so it, it does kind of, you can be just as unhealthy being a big meat eater as you can being an unhealthy vegetarian. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, and I did notice, well, one thing that I really noticed during the weekday vegetarian was the uh, explosion of flavor. I could taste more of my food. Really? Because the, meat is a sort of a, um, I guess the glue for mm-hmm. most meals for, for people who eat meat. Oh, yeah. And so you focus on the taste of the meat, you know, is the chicken juicy, is the, you know, you know. So when you think about yeah. the other foods that are mm-hmm. around, you know, the toasted cashews and the stir mm-hmm. fry and the, oh, you yeah. know, the kale and the, all of those things that, right. that are in there, you, wow, this is really an explosion of flavor. Yeah, and, and that's so great to hear you say that because one thing that happens at family meals, for example, and I apologize to my family if they see this, <laughs> but you get, um, sometimes you get, you know, like they get their meat and then you get like just boiled carrots and potatoes. Well, for them, that's fine because they're focused on the meat. Right. I grew up only eating those sides and things like that. Right. And they are, they're terrible. But when you focus on those and you really, you can really make those into some of the most delicious dishes. Right? Absolutely. And that's what we do at home when we do have a kitchen and we can cook. Is, right. is you make them, you know, just as delicious as your meat. Right. So, so we're going to finish up our conversation now. But before we go, I want you to tell everyone a little bit about your blog and what you guys do and how mm-hmm. they can follow along. Okay, great. So um, my partner, Donnie, and I, we run GlobetrotterGirls.com. Um, we left in April 2010, so it's been over 600 days. And um, we have figured out a system for living and working on the road. Uh, I am a freelance writer. Um, Donnie, is, she still has some clients back in the UK, which is where we used to live. And um, we are trying to make this our lifestyle for, I would guess, at least the next five years. Wow. Yeah. And so on GlobetrotterGirls.com, we cover basically... All the places that we visit, we try and be really in depth so that you can use the website as a reference. And we also try and show what it's like to be on the road. Fantastic. And you have some great photos. Great oh, photos. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's all Donnie. That's not me. <laughs> 
All right, well, that is it with vegetarianism. This was your bonus little resource guide in this issue. If you are thinking about vegetarianism yourself, uh, let us know how it goes for you. Until next time.